In the year 2267, Earth has become inhospitable due to environmental collapse, forcing humans to live in congested space stations orbiting the planet. Those with sufficient funds escape to Rhea, a planet where they can start anew. Laura is keen to join her sister on Rhea and has worked as the ship's doctor on the cargo vessel Cassandra to earn the necessary funds. The journey to station number 42 is expected to take four years each way, so the crew will enter cryosleep, with one person staying awake for eight-month shifts to monitor the ship. Before departing, Laura sends her sister a final video message, which will take several years to reach Rhea. On board Cassandra, Laura meets the crew, Captain LaCroix, First Officer Lindbergh, System Administrator Yoshida, Prokof, and Vespucci. Also present is Decker, a sky marshal assigned by the government due to recent attacks on ships by the Neo-Luddite group machine strikers, who oppose living within machines. Their leader, Bruckner, remains at large after bombing several stations, so the crew is on alert. The crew enters cryosleep, and the voyage proceeds smoothly for three years. When Laura awakens, she discovers a message from her sister, Ariane, expressing concerns about terrorist attacks. Laura responds and focuses on maintaining a routine for her mental health, including reading, exercising, and monitoring the ship's systems. One day, Laura hears strange noises aboard the ship and follows them to the cargo bay, where she encounters something banging on the door. Frightened, she runs and unexpectedly encounters Decker, who explains that he was automatically awakened when the system detected unauthorized entry into the cargo bay, which is off-limits. Laura reports the incident to Decker and wakes LaCroix, as protocol dictates the captain must be present during unexpected events. Once LaCroix is awake, they inspect the cargo bay and find the astronaut suits scattered on the floor. LaCroix initially attributes this to air pressure, but upon reviewing the system logs, he finds multiple unauthorized accesses during Laura's shift. The group then suits up and enters the containment area, propping open the gate with a metal plate. They split up to investigate, and Laura climbs to the upper level, which features precarious, narrow bridges. Out of the blue, Laura notices something falling, it's LaCroix. Decker and Laura hurry to check on him and find him unconscious. The gate begins to close as it's warping the plate. Decker lifts LaCroix, and they rush out with Laura before getting trapped inside. Once they make it out, it's too late for LaCroix, and no amount of CPR can save him. Since this is now an emergency, the entire crew must be awakened. Following the protocol, Lindbergh assumes command and quickly assigns tasks. Yoshida is tasked with checking the logs for suspicious activity, Laura is instructed to perform an autopsy on LaCroix, and Prokof and Vespucci are ordered to repair the gate. During the autopsy, Laura confirms LaCroix died from the fall, but she also discovers that one of his eyes is an implant. Laura and Decker connect the eye to the computer to review LaCroix's final moments. To their astonishment, they see LaCroix discover an open containment unit labeled with a biohazard warning, which doesn't align with their mission to transport construction materials. While Prokof and Vespucci find that the gate's gears have somehow broken, Laura and Decker head back to the cargo bay, using LaCroix's badge to check out the containers from the video. They venture further in and discover that thick pipes interconnect all the units. Upon closer inspection, they find a shocking discovery, the containers house sleeping humans. They call on Prokof and Vespucci to assist in moving one container with a child out of the bay, which triggers an alert in the system, causing all the units to start moving. The team moves quickly, but Laura nearly falls and clings to the stairs until Decker helps her. Soon, they bring the container to the medical bay. Lindbergh is displeased because they shouldn't interfere with the cargo, but now the crew wonders if LaCroix was killed for seeing something he shouldn't have. It's clear someone set the containers in motion to harm them, but Lindbergh claims it was just the system organizing the units, suggesting they should return the child. Decker reminds her this is a murder investigation, and Laura is authorized to inspect the child thoroughly. The scan confirms the child is under cryosleep but she can't gather more information as the tank interferes with her equipment. Laura asks Decker for assistance, and he uses a unique program to unlock the unit's digital lock in a few minutes. While waiting, Laura talks about her sister on Rhea, and Decker kisses her. Meanwhile, Lindbergh instructs Yoshida to investigate Decker, suspecting something is amiss. At the cargo bay, Prokof and Vespucci start hearing strange sounds from within. 
Once the container is unlocked, Laura examines the child closely and finds a sophisticated virtual reality connector embedded in the girl's spine, something she's never seen before. Decker wants to disconnect her, but Laura objects, fearing it could cause irreversible neural damage. Reluctantly, Decker agrees and asks Laura to keep this secret for now. Later, Laura sends another message to Ariane, detailing her findings and complaining about how long messages take to arrive. Meanwhile, Yoshida tries to access Decker's file but gets blocked out. Twenty minutes later, Laura is surprised when Ariane responds quickly. Confused, she confronts Decker, questioning why he keeps secrets and how he knows how to open the units. Instead of answering, Decker kisses her, and they end up getting intimate. Lindbergh gathers everyone on deck a few hours later and informs them that Yoshida discovered someone tampered with the cryo chamber logs. Decker has been awakened regularly, but he explains that it's his duty to check on the ship periodically. Lindbergh suspects him of being LaCroix's killer and tries to arrest him, leading Decker to defend himself. Yoshida and Vespucci manage to subdue him, but Decker gets hurt in the struggle, and Laura asks them to bring him to the medical bay to avoid blood contamination. Laura tends to Decker's wound while ignoring his attempts at small talk. Before she leaves, Decker reveals they're not going to station number 42 but to Rhea. Afterward, Decker is put back into cryo-sleep. In private, Laura asks Yoshida to check the ship's destination. Yoshida confirms they're not going to station number 42, and since it's impossible to change coordinates after the flight has begun, this was planned from the start. When Laura mentions that her messages are arriving quickly at Rhea, Yoshida notes that Lindbergh lies to them since she should know the coordinates. Yoshida returns to her computer to investigate further. While Laura is drinking with the guys, she notices the power fluctuating and grows concerned for Yoshida, so she goes to check on her. Unfortunately, Yoshida is already dead. The crew immediately checks on Decker and finds that he's escaped the cryopod. The logs indicate that someone released him. The crew arms themselves and starts searching for Decker. Laura and Vespucci head to the lower deck and discover an open duct, suspecting that Decker escaped. Vespucci goes to the opposite side of the vent while Laura climbs through her end, finding a hidden chamber filled with trash. Suddenly, a man attacks her, and during the struggle, Laura shoots him. Upon closer inspection, they identify the man as the terrorist Bruckner, and they find a box containing his belongings nearby. Laura discovers pictures of the machine strikers developing natural resources and learns that Decker is associated with the organization. She also finds a tablet containing a video that shows the machine strikers growing food on Earth using greenhouses and purifying their water, suggesting that there's no need to leave the planet if efforts are made to clean it. Vespucci startles Laura when he informs her that they've found Decker. The crew gathers on deck, and Lindbergh orders them to beat Decker to make him talk. Decker reveals that Rhea is a simulation and that the people in the containers are being used as neural units. The government is lying because if people knew that parts of Earth were habitable again, the system would collapse. Decker admits that Bruckner lost his mind and killed LaCroix but not Yoshida. Vespucci and Prokof take Decker away while Lindbergh tells Laura to deal with the child and return her to the cargo hold. Lindbergh also wants Laura to return to cryosleep, promising to take over her shift. Suspicious, Laura draws her gun, but Lindbergh overpowers her and ties her up. Lindbergh explains that the settlement on Rhea failed, and the simulation is temporary until they find a new planet to terraform. The simulation keeps people hopeful, and Lindbergh won't allow anyone to interfere, so she plans to kill Laura and Decker, blaming them for the captain's death. Meanwhile, Vespucci and Prokof confront Decker in a random corridor, demanding answers. Upon learning that Lindbergh knew everything from the start, they decided to capture her and place her in cryosleep. Vespucci suggests to Prokof that they should connect to Rhea, as the simulation is preferable to their current reality. In the medical bay, Laura successfully begins the safe awakening of the child from the unit. Decker apologizes for lying and asks for her assistance, to which Laura agrees on the condition that he rescues her sister from the simulation. The crew then formulates a plan. They decide to proceed to station number 42, where the simulation is housed so that Decker can connect Laura to the system and send a message revealing the truth to Earth. They plan to destroy the antenna afterward. In the following days, Decker and Laura spent time together, and Decker shared stories of how nature has reclaimed areas on Earth. 
Upon arrival at station number 42, they delay the cargo delivery, taking 30 minutes to execute their plan. Laura discovers the child awake and wandering, so she quickly escorts her back to her room for safety. Meanwhile, Prokof and Vespucci covertly work against the plan, intending to connect themselves to Rhea. They need Lindbergh's badge to do so, so Vespucci burns his hand with cryo-liquid to retrieve it from the tank while Prokof reprograms the cargo unloading to take place in 10 minutes instead of 30. They then use the badge to access the units, disconnecting two people to take their places in the simulation. As the system initiates the delivery protocol, Lindbergh awakens. Meanwhile, Decker goes on a spacewalk to place explosives on the station's antenna before searching for Ariane's container, which he fortunately finds quickly. Laura decides to join him, but her suit malfunctions and Decker has to catch her before she drifts away. Decker informs Laura that unplugging the units would kill the occupants. So, Laura requests to be connected to the simulation to communicate with her sister and send a message. At this point, the ship starts delivering the cargo automatically, leaving only a few minutes before it begins its return journey. Decker connects Laura to Rhea, where she finds herself in a stunning forest. Nearby, Laura reunites with Ariane and her children and feels devastated at the prospect of ending their happiness. She runs into the woods and records a message for Earth, revealing the truth about Rhea, just before Decker wakes her up with grim news. Since the power cell of Laura's jetpack is damaged, Decker gives her his, allowing only her to return to the ship. Laura hesitates to leave without him, but Decker reminds her she must protect the children, as she holds their only evidence. Suddenly, the ship's thrusters activate, pushing them away from the station. Decker uses this momentum to release Laura and drift away into space. Grieving but resolute, Laura uses the jetpack to re-enter the ship just as the station antenna explodes. As the ship enters autopilot mode for the return flight, Laura searches for the girl and encounters Lindbergh. A struggle ensues, and when Lindbergh grabs an axe, she accidentally damages a gas tank. Laura uses the gas to propel Lindbergh into an airlock, trapping her inside. The airlock then opens, ejecting Lindbergh into space. Laura finds the child calmly eating, and they begin a new routine for the journey back. Meanwhile, Laura's message reaches stations around Earth, revealing the truth.